episodes. Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. We, we have quite a lot of topics to cover this meeting, especially considering that we had um, to stop the meeting last week a little bit earlier. So the first one topic that I want to bring here, we started discussing briefly last week, which was, is it the right time to bring back Confluence on the Jenkins project? I really invite you. So we started the discussion on the mailing list, the Jenkins infrastructure mailing list. I really invite you to join the discussion and to provide inputs. I think here we are trying to solve different thing. Um, so yes, I, I'm really looking forward to have your feedback on that topic. The next topic that I also want to, 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 to cover now, we had a discussion with a, like with the Linux Foundation uh, for an opportunity to use a tool named LFX. So LFX is an interface in front of Sneak. And so it's a tool that we can use to analyze uh, security issues on the project. So by default, it's enabled on the Jenkins CI organization. And there we have a small group of people who are testing that. And we could also enable that on the Jenkins infra organization. So we have two approach here. Either we enable it on every Git repositories that we have on the Jenkins infrastructure, or we identify a small group of repository that we want to analyze. And based on that, um, if the, um, if everything goes well, um, maybe we could I mean, extend the usage. I don't know if you have any expectation on this topic. I would be really interested to also hear about them. So Oleg started also a discussion on the mailing list quite recently. So I would be really interested to have your feedback there as well. From my point of view, the next step, I will just enable, I was maybe thinking to take small kit repositories, maybe just to analyze Docker um, images um, or something like that. The idea is really to try to see, I, I just don't want to put too much pressure on the, on the infra team uh, in the coming weeks. Any expectation on this? So, so this is the LFX security and what it does is it provides scanning of images, so scanning of Docker images. Does it also scan source code, or is so it? It's, it's it scanned the source code, but my understanding is that we can also use it to scan uh, the Docker images published on Docker Hub. So I I still have basic knowledge because um, it does not provide all the feature from Sneak because it's a layer on top of Sneak. So maybe Ole can provide more information on that topic. Yeah, I'm here. Just a no, second, that... Stephen Adil uh, is also joining. Mm. Uh, because... Hi, David. Hello. Oh, David, sorry. Yeah. So we, we were in the Hangouts uh, meeting because apparently it has been added to the calendar again. Okay. I just say I just say that in that calendar update we, that you sent our leg. I saw okay. hangouts on, on, I was like, okay. just ignored it though. Okay. So the question is about the LFX security, right? Yeah, the question was how can we integrate LFX security with the Jenkins infrastructure project? So the idea here is we have around 100 kit repositories. We have different kind of application. Um, mm -hmm. We also have Docker images. And so the idea here would be to identify a small group of project that we could use just to, to understand how the process work and how we use that tool efficiently. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Would you uh, do you need a overview of kind of what I'm hoping to do to integrate it, or if if you have a, if you could do a quick overview here, that would be really great. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, sure. Let me. Uh, is it possible that I could screen share with? So you should let me just stop share my. Okay, sounds good. I will uh, do a quick thing here. So um, yeah, I sent, uh, I've been sort of reaching out to the community members um, to discuss kind of what's involved with uh, integrating LFX security version two. Uh, you guys may have um, seen the LFX security, um, oops, uh, should have came up right, security, here we go. You've probably maybe seen uh, the V1 system that we have. This is, um, our interface for this. And um, if we look for, you know, just the Jenkins or other projects, they happen to be here. 
Um, it provides sort of just a roll up of only vulnerabilities. So this is SNCC um, data. SNCC is one of the two vendors that we're working with. This one just looks at dependencies and stuff like that. For version two, we're actually bringing in um, a new vendor. Uh, this is a, a tool called Blue Bracket, which does uh, 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 code secrets. So if I were to log in, this is their interface. It's a bit clunky, so please bear with me. And it's a bit slow. <laughs> Um, but we're going to bring uh, all the data that they collect, as well as the SNCC data, into uh, our new portal. So if I go back to SNCC, one of the things that we're going to inherit, we're re-architecting it where previously we were scanning all the repositories, we were collecting all the data and then presenting it. For version two, we're actually going to have uh, SNCC do the scans. Um, that allows us to, yeah, their, their website's kind of bad, so sorry about that. But uh, what we're actually going to do is um, SNCC is going to be responsible for scanning the repositories. That means that we're going to uh, inherit all of their new capabilities that they've added recently, which does include the Docker images. It includes .NET projects, things that we haven't um, brought in. Uh, to our platform yet. So we're going to let them sort of do all the scanning on their side and in their infrastructure. And then we're going to actually just aggregate those results and present it to everyone in our portal. Um, Blue Bracket, again, is the second vendor that we're going to do. Um, it, we're working to uh, pull in um, information from here. Uh, what we're going to get in Blue Bracket is things like passwords, tokens, JWT, secrets, um, things like that. So this tool is designed just to identify, um, you know, any mistakes the developers have added to the repository that includes like things that are a little suspicious that might be, might be an AWS ID, might be an AWS token, maybe not, maybe it's a, you know, uh, credentials for a test environment. So those are gonna be uh, brought into the console so that the community members and maintainers can review that. And then they can make a hard decision whether or not, you know, um, this information is uh, suspect. You know, um, one of the things we're going to have to work with this vendor is like, okay, the Zoom password, is that really like a secret? Is it okay if we share it with the community? In a lot of cases, like this case here, like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, just click it and you can come into the Zoom. Um, other cases where um, it'll help identify is like, if a developer accidentally included like a Terraform state file, which has happened a lot, uh, which happens to have, you know, AWS credentials. So those types of things will be brought in with this tool. Um, so we're hoping that we get some feedback from, you know, our pilot, pilot uh, projects. So you can kind of see if this tool is useful. Is it, is it too noisy? Can we maybe tweak how we filter the data such that it brings awareness? Um, the other thing I want to mention really briefly, and I can pause to ask questions, is um, this tool here goes through the entire Git history. So if you, uh, you may uh, uncover or unearth a token that was committed like six months ago, perhaps by a developer who has left the project or left the community. So this will go through all the Git history and do that. Um, one thing we're also hoping to get um, access to for the v2 platform on SNCC, we're going to add sort of a, a remediation link or a mechanism such that the community members you can see the vulnerability uh, you can click which will take you and do a sso login all the way to the slit uh, the SNCC console and then from there you can uh, decide if you want to create a pull request to fix it right so maybe a lot of times the vulnerabilities will have a um, just a version bump that would resolve it. Maybe it's a Node.js problem, or you know, some JavaScript library, or a Java um, you know logger problem, or something. And maybe you just need to bump the library. So we're going to take you um, through the con through our console over to SNCC through SSO, so you don't have to log in again, and then you can decide uh, how to fix it. Uh, for Blue Bracket, we're going to work with them on how to. Uh, fixing like uh, passwords that were committed six months ago is a bit of a problem. You have to actually go and rewrite a bunch of uh, Git history. If any of you guys are super familiar with that, that's a pain in the butt. Um, 
the last point I want to bring up about uh, LFX security version two is um, given that we're um, uh, we're sort of pushing uh, a new strategy for uh, managing access to your repositories. So instead of me creating a personal access token and then me cloning your project and then me scanning your project with my personal access token and getting details and querying the languages and you know the commit details and all that stuff, we're actually going to be using a, a, a GitHub app, which uh, some of you may be familiar with. Um, uh, and if we, part of this is to allow us to um, get, do this at scale. So what happens is with uh, the GitHub app approach, we can install a bot into your organization, which uh, essentially gives us a, a finite set of permissions. And I've enumerated the permissions here. These are examples of uh, some of the details that we can access in your org. And what we get is like 5,000 requests per org so that for each of the LF uh, community, I can have you know multiple instances of the bots all over the place and it scales a little better. Um, and I've enumerated on this one Confluence page that we have uh, the minimum set of restrictions that we think we need in order for the vendors, Blue Bracket and SNCC to be able to scan your repositories. Um, yeah, so that's this a big whirlwind of updates on the differences between V1 and V2 security. Um, sounds like the Jenkins Infra project is a smaller subset, might be a good candidate. We can choose one or two repos to sort of evaluate this, but we are looking for feedback and early adopters to see if it's uh, if this uh, whole flow works. Are there any particular technology stacks you're focusing on? Uh, because yeah, the infra repository has so many different technologies uh, due to various historical reasons. So you, is there something uh, you're looking feedback for particularly? Um, what was your question specifically? Uh, so, okay, so, 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 the, the, so the question, that let me explain that in a different way. So we have quite a lot of different Git repositories. We have a lot of different application, custom application. We have Terraform, we have Helm, we have Kubernetes, we have Puppet. We have, I mean, we have quite a lot of stuff in the Git repositories. And so the question was, is there a specific project that we should uh, start with? Yeah, good, great point, good point. Um, so let's let's talk about each uh, of our vendors. So one SNCC is mostly focused on you know software projects, not a, not a lot of CI/CD like Terraform and Puppet and Chef. Um, they can probably look at like Chef and look at the dependencies it pulls in, and then report if there's some known vulnerabilities and maybe some network tools or whatever. Um, so it's just going to look for dependencies of those tools. So if they're in a manifest file, then those are good candidates that SNCC can easily scan. For, for Blue Bracket, the code secrets, it doesn't matter, right? It's just looking for um, you know, uh, keywords and passwords and, and things that may have been committed in your Git history. So it'll work regardless of the technology. I wanted to mention also that we are reaching out. Uh, we've got a demo. Last week, I think, there was a, a company or a vendor that specifically um, was looking at Terraform data. So there was like, uh, I forget the vendor name, it was like Terra Terraform State or something. But they actually um, were focused on applying policies to Terraform to see if you are uh, complying with best practices. So they had like a list of, um, you know, um, policies that you could apply to a, a repository and it would evaluate to see if you're in compliance. And of course you can, tweak the compliance uh, stuff, but it actually had a lot of intelligence on, you know, how are you using um, EC2, you know, and, and, and all the other AWS resources, and are, is this sort of the best way of going? So it, it make recommendations. So longer term, that's what we're, we're also hoping to bring in more CI, CD infrastructure tools uh, within this platform. Okay, that sounds great. But we also have custom application, let's say, um, you know, the account app and stuff like that. So we definitely, I mean, we definitely have um, places where we can, we could test and learn a little sure. bit with the tool. Sure. Um, 
regarding the GitHub app, I think what we can do with, for the next step would just be to allow a specific Git repository. So not the whole organization, but just let's say five, five Absolutely. Git repository. Yeah. Um, in that case, would it be possible to have access to the documentation that you just show about the permission that you need? Yeah, I have. Um, um, so when you when you click on the app, so what I would probably do is just agree with you, like how many repos you want to bring on board. Um, step one for me is to uh, just set it in my, uh, I basically onboard it and add some entries in my database. Step two is I will give you a link to the GitHub bot. You click on it, you decide if you want all the repos, just like you said, or just a subset. Okay. You can review the permissions at that point. I can also give you or share with this group here. Um, I don't know if the links will carry over, but um, I can drop this in the Zoom chat or maybe share it on Slack somewhere. Uh, the uh, list oh, of permissions. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, I think I can have your email address. So maybe by email, that would be fine. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that, yeah, I, I would be really happy to test that in our, in our current workflow. Mm -hmm. so and then, the um, so I, I've, I've reached out to the vendors and it's like, I think this is the minimum set. So I'm sort of also negotiating with them as like, can you confirm like uh, the links I'll share with you in email if you give, if we do that? Uh, I've hyperlinked the um, exact API calls that are going to be invoked for like uh, reading the email or doing a webhook. There's actually a very specific list of API calls that are uh, are there. So, yeah, you can review that and decide if it's uh, something that you're comfortable with or not. Okay, but if we can do it that per repository, that would be okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So you just choose like when you uh, set it up, you can just. Uh, you, you can select or do all, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Any other question for the, the other folks on the call? If, I mean, otherwise, thanks. Thanks, David, for the presentation. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, we're obviously looking for feedback um, on the security tool and the experience. Ideally, um, instead of me and you talking, you could we would direct you to our console and then you could, uh, we would give you permission. You could review it all, point, click, point, click, and just do it yourself. But it's a little early phases. We're trying to get the admin console going. Um, and, yeah, for now, we'll just do it this way. And if my understanding is correct, the V2 is not yet available. The what's not yet available? The, 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 v, the V2 version, LFX yeah. V2. So we have our um, developers are working on the, for example, the blue bracket uh, representation. So all the data that's coming back. Uh, he's draw, he's taken that API from blue bracket and displaying it. Um, so I think in the next coming weeks, we're going to be adding that. And so uh, for you guys who have onboarded, I want to show that to you at some point and get you to start looking at it. And then um, that's where I think uh, you guys can come back and say, oh, this is, this is good. This is bad. I don't like this. Maybe you should change it. So you guys being early, you can help influence what it looks like. And maybe we need to add filters and that sort of thing. So you can tell me. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your time. Yeah. yeah. So should I, uh, should I drop now or should uh, any other maybe I think if we don't have another other question, you can drop if you like. Um, otherwise, you can stay with us as you wish. Um, we, okay. we, we, we just talk about specific topics for the Jenkins infrastructure. So um, feel free to drop off if you prefer. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. So, yeah, regarding uh, the infrastructure, I actually wanted to ask what additional uh, permissions agreements we need uh, to start that. My understanding is that Olivia prefers to go ahead and try out uh, some repositories. As, yeah, as long as we uh, protect confidential content within the Jenkins Infra organization, I think we could do that. So I think, yeah, definitely, I would like to move forward with that tool. I would just decide on what we want to analyze first uh, and just select a small set of um, Git repositories. I just don't want to introduce too much noise um, because yeah, otherwise we will just ignore those. So now the question is what, because my understanding is the V2 is not ready yet. Um, so we only have access to the sneak. Um, yeah. To sneak, and so in that case, it sounds to me that uh, analyzing Docker images is maybe better. So what Docker do images think? are a bit complicated because of our architecture. Again, I'm not sure you will be able to use a standard GitHub integration there. 
because we mesh multiple Docker images within the same repository, basically uh, by manage that uh, using our pipelines. So I'm not sure whether it will work. Uh, same for the most of the uh, Jenkins CI organization. We are waiting for we to specify uh, allow lists and um, uh, denialists uh, for CVs. Before that, uh, it doesn't make sense to adopt uh, LFX security in the main organization, and we are waiting for Sneak to deliver the feature for testing. So that's why we talked about infrastructure, because it seems to be one of the most straightforward ways to evaluate something if you want to start now. So, Oleg, I, to be sure, did you, I think you said that they're assuming that we don't have more than a single, single Docker file, for instance, in a repository, that it's repository per, so our Docker, Docker, our Docker Sneak, repository. Uh, to be evaluated. Uh, okay. But yeah, in Sneak, there are two ways. One is GitHub integration, which is relatively simple. And you can also use uh, APIs uh, for um, any each case you may have. And the specifics of LFX security in the current state that you have no access to these APIs. And until uh, they expose that for LFX security too, for example, yeah, what we cannot do is, for example, submitting a plugin or a Jenkins code bill of materials for analysis um, instead of uh, a standard for maximal. And but do um, you think about doing that in two times, that first training with the GitHub integration on a yeah. simple Docker image? Uh, we have a bunch of Docker dash something on Jenkins Infra, which repository are public. So yeah, the goal will be try one and see the fit, the output from the tool before jumping ahead and integrating. Yeah, maybe it's before misunderstood because I rather interpret it as Jenkins core and the agent Docker images. And, and, and you interpreted exactly what I was asking. So you you understood my question, but I think Damien's got a very good insight that that there may be narrow narrowly focused repositories we could use first before we use the broad repositories. For instance, this one, this is the image we use internally. So th that will be a first step. Uh, the, 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 the final target to be on the Jenkins score and agent image is clear. But as a first step, I propose that we try like the one I've put. That's an image that we use to run Terraform on the CI. It's one yeah. image, one repo, one Docker file. And, and if we want to go one step further, we could also analyze the Jenkins cell test or the Jenkins weekly Docker image because it's a simple Docker file. And we have yep. a double advantage there because we may catch errors from the Jenkins upstream that we maintain as well. So I think by carefully taking, uh, selecting the right Git repositories, um, we could also have, that could also benefit to the Jenkins CI organization. I can take the, that task, that initial task on the both two repository, targeting the GitHub integration. If someone can just point me uh, the instruction or credential or whatever requirement on the LX, LFX stuff, if it's okay for you. Unless okay. someone else wants to take it, I don't mind. Yeah, David is ready to create a new organization for us because of the specifics of uh, standard integration that you can have one GitHub integration to uh, one uh, single organization, and basically it means uh, just having one uh, hub work. Of course, I do not think that it's any kind of a concern because there will be little to no overlap between Jenkins and Jenkins TI in terms of configurations. Uh, so, yeah, I think that we could start uh, Jenkins and Francis and then figure out the rest later. And something that I'm wondering if it would benefit is to analyze. Um, repositories like the plugin site API or Jenkins.io website. Because in those Git repositories, my understanding is we are more interested by our credentials that we would leak or something like that. I'm, I'm just wondering the benefit of using such a tools. Um, well, hypothetically, for example, plugin site, there might be XSS yeah. uh, somewhere in a component we use. Yeah, I know that it's a long shot, but in theory it could be. And for us, um, again, it's evaluation for now. So for me, it would be useful to just get as many projects as we can relatively safely and get some results to see whether it produces complete crop 
or whether it produces something potentially feasible for this type of repositories and then iterate based on that. Because for example, if uh, it produces, let's say uh, five warnings for plugin side and these warnings are reasonable just for dependable bot to pick up. Okay, great, this tool works, let's keep it. If it produces 10,000 uh, fails positives like in, for Jenkins plugins, then probably we shouldn't keep that doing. But so, it was trying. So it sounds like we have kind of an agreement that we are all interested to move forward. Another question is who will drive that project? Uh, we don't have to take a decision right now, but I think that would be a nice opportunity if someone is interested to know a little bit more. Obviously, because of the topic, um, I would prefer to have someone familiar with the Jenkins project, but I think that would be a great opportunity to delegate a little bit. Tim, what do you think about uh, this project you were selling uh, during the discussion? Same for Aditya. Uh, I don't know. I've just been burnt by Snack multiple times before. That I'm interested to see how this goes, but I don't want to be too involved. I've had yeah, one very painful interaction to... recently and tried evaluating it before and it just didn't <clears throat> fit for us. It was, I logged into it basically and it opened 200 pull requests under my account and just completely spammed my inbox. I had to write a script to close them all. It was, it was horrible. Well, I had to literally write Java code to do it because I couldn't find any <clears throat> bulk way. There was no bulk way to close pull requests and just getting notifications constantly. Was, ugh. I have a t-shirt about false positives suck, I believe from Sneak or maybe from somebody else. So next meeting, I will be wearing this t-shirt, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I I to... uh, on, on, that, on, that, on, the, on that noise topic, I, well, I'm really afraid. Uh, I'm really afraid that um, it analyzed the old history of the Jenkins infrastructure to detect passwords that were leaked <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. we, we modified we did, that. But. Yeah, we have had tools find stuff in ours before because of that. Like that wasn't in the current history. So we, we, we opened up one Git repo and it had like an old Slack token in it and um, GitHub detected it. GitHub tends yeah. to be really good at these things. Yeah. As long no, as no. nobody requires me to install Git secrets on my laptop so that uh, my Git check-in uh, takes 100 times longer to complete. I'm fine. Yeah, no finger pointing at all. Yeah, okay, talk to so, it for us, but no one wants to do it. So, sounds like we we still have, I mean, the meeting is over in two minutes, basically. So we won't have the time to cover the other topic. So is there a specific one that you want to briefly cover now? Uh, so, brief update uh, on AWS sponsorship. We might have good news on AWS sponsorship, but it, it still needs to be concluded. Cool. Uh, I was keeping that news for uh, once we have more information. You asked for really quick update, and uh, it's exactly uh, what I can say. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Alec, um, for starting. So Alec, Alec uh, contacted uh, Amazon to see if we could renew the sponsoring program, uh, and um, it seems to be um, good. But yeah, we still have to to, to solve and to, to fill some paper. Mm -hmm. um, Just on the one note, on the JIP 229, um, I've got a poor regress on Jenkins.io. Um, documenting and recommending the JEP 229 process for automating the um, plugin releases, moving away from people releasing from their laptops. Um, I think Daniel raised a concern that it's more pressure on infrastructure. Um, and I kind of documented two processes where you, if different levels of infrastructure are down, you can work around it. Um, is there any concerns about the recommendation? Right. I do have concerns. We still have a problem with uh, releasing uh, Jenkins components, not from Jenkins. So basically, we say that uh, if you use uh, want to do continuous delivery for components, uh, we would rather use GitHub Actions than Jenkins. I understand that uh, it's not exactly what you say, but uh, it can be perceived that way. 
Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, before we recommend the job to two nine process, I think that we need to explicitly agree on that. So we had uh, discussions at the contributor summit, but I believe they were inconclusive so far. My understanding is that would be difficult to use Jenkins instead of GitHub Action. So I definitely share your concern. Um, I would also prefer to use Jenkins instead of GitHub Action. Uh, okay, but, but uh, we have multiple ways. We can keep, uh, let's say, chapter to nine in preview for now until we totally agree that it's something we want to widely adopt. Uh, in this case, we keep this topic down uh, the road. At the same time, uh, we don't get wide adoption of the process for now. Or we do opposite. We say that uh, now GitHub Actions is the future for continuous delivery of Jenkins components. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, probably it gets a wider adoption, but yeah, it sounds a bit weird, to be honest. What I find weird is I don't think that's a topic that we should cover um, in the Jenkins Infra meeting because it, I mean, it, it what, means a what, governance meeting decision. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Because what we can do in the Jenkins infrastructure meeting is to identify ways to improve and to help. So if you want to move forward and uh, you implement a reuse JEP 229, and we have dependencies on infrastructure, maybe we can improve, let's say, the monitoring. Our, I mean, yeah. th- those are the kind of things that we should discuss on the Jenkins infra. Um, I definitely yeah. think about so my uh, proposal would be to definitely get the documentation from Team Merged. Uh, to put a work in progress preview notice for now, um, to have at least it for, from the navigation as preview, but not to switch it uh, to the default recommendation for now until we reach the agreement. What do you think, Tim? Hmm. I don't know. Um... I don't think it's a governance board thing. It's a part of the JEP process and mailing in the mailing list thing. Um, yeah, so possibly... it's not governance board uh, deciding. Uh, it's Jenkins community deciding. So we have pending update to JEP 1. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that we should explicitly reach a consensus in the community on this topic. And once we reach that, then uh, yeah, it can be applied. Um, did you want to raise that since you're the one raising the concern or? Um, okay. I'm happy to be uh, a bit there if needed. Yeah, I mean, f- for me, the process is there and it is so much better than the process that we currently have. It's so yeah. much easier. Um, uh, nobody it's... argues with that. Uh, and whatever we do, we need to keep this automation. Uh, the question is whether we want to keep it on GitHub Actions as a final implementation or whether we just use it as a prototype and then applying some magic passes and get it running on Jenkins. Again, again, I don't think that we should take, I mean, discuss much about that here because it's definitely the, the best place. Um, so I just propose to, I mean, <clears throat> so I just propose that we continue that specific discussion on the mailing list. So we have more people. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to explain that I am not trying to sidetrack a job to two nine. Uh, but yeah, I would like to ensure that we have consensus before we make it a default recommendation for users. So yeah, on, on, yeah. Mm-hmm. on my side, I just prefer to move step by step. So if we already have something working, we could all, all still Im- improve the situation later. Um, but yeah, again, I propose that we, we because we are forming over the meeting. So I propose that we stop the meeting here and that we continue the discussion on the mailing list. Thanks everybody for your time and see you on IRC. Bye-bye. Bye.